this uh, uh, series of videos on uh, designing supply chain networks. The, in the first video, we'll talk about uh, the uh, philosophy of design uh, supply chain networks, for a basic introduction of uh, how you design supply chain networks. And then uh, over this week and next week, we'll talk about different uh, models that you can use to design supply chain networks, right? So that's, that's the plan. Okay, let's get going. Now, what is the role of network design? How, how is that useful? So the role of network design is to figure out a few things. So one is, um, um, or the role of network design is to use a few of these things to figure out exactly how your network is going to look like. So um, when you're designing supply chain networks, you are mainly talking about locating facilities and moving items between facilities. So when you talk about facilities, you need to know what kind of role they are, uh, what processes they have. So different kinds of facilities could be manufacturing facilities, warehouses, you can have office locations, you can have uh, transit centers and so on. So there are different types of facilities that you have. You need to know which of these are going to be part of your network design. Then you also need to know where this facility is going to be located. Uh, what kind of capacity you're going to allocate to this facility. So by capacity allocation, you mean if it's a manufacturing facility, you're talking about how many, you know, how many cars can GM manufacture per day. So that's the capacity of a GM plant. Or it could be how many calls can a call center accept per day. Or uh, how many uh, people can, um, uh, can, can be present in an office in a certain day and so on. So, Capacity uh, uh, is decided by the type of facility where you're located and so on. Now, apart from that, you also have to do market and supply allocation. Some of these things we saw in the transportation and the transshipment models, if you remember. A lot of these things, uh, what we are going to talk about today, are sort of extensions of what we learned in the capacity, to, in the sorry, in the transportation and the transshipment models. Now, a lot of times when you're designing uh, networks, it is because you're either re revisiting some changes because of markets or maybe there was a merger or maybe you're designing a supply chain from scratch, uh, designing a new supply chain from scratch for a new product. So either way, um, there is a reason why you're doing a supply chain design. Now, there are many factors that influence supply chain design, everything from strategic to technological factors to macroeconomic factors, including things like taxes and how is the economy doing, what are the fuel costs like, is, the gas, expen is gas expensive. Obviously, um, apart from macroeconomic factors, you also have political factors and uh, uh, infrastructure-based factors, competitive factors, who your competitors are, are they close to you, are they far away from you, are they sourcing from the same locations, are the same suppliers and so on. So all of these things uh, will affect the way you design your network. Now, you also have obviously have to include things like customer response and lead time. Do you want to be a responsive supply chain or a efficient supply chain, if you remember from what we talked about a couple of weeks ago? And of course, other things like logistics and facility costs also. Now, I'm not going to go over this model in detail. So if you have a demand in a market and there are two different firms, the best way to sort of capture market share is to divide up your demand in a certain way. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you read that on your own. Now, we are going to talk about the framework for designing supply chain uh, networks and the decisions that go into it. So there are four major phases in uh, in designing uh, supply chain uh, networks and the decisions that need to be made are different in each of these phases. So the top phase, phase one, is the strategy phase where you're coming up with large, um, uh, big picture ideas like how does your supply chain strategy fit within your company's overall strategy? What kind of growth strategies does the comp company have? What kind of global competition does your company have and so on? So these are big picture uh, um, ideas. Phase two is uh, regional facility configuration. Now, once you've decided that your supply chain is going to be a certain way, you have to decide what kind of facilities you're going to have. Are you going to have manufacturing facilities? Are you going to have warehouse facilities? Where are they going to be located? Are you going to have offices? Are you going to have sales uh, locations? Are you going to have call centers? All of these are different types of facilities that you need to uh, 
uh, figure out. So you need to decide the configuration of these facilities and then you have to figure out what the suitable sites are. That's phase three. And finally, you have to figure out which of these location choices you're going to choose. That's phase four. So a lot of what we're going to talk about today is within the phase two, phase three, phase four world, mostly, in fact, within uh, phase two. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to keep these videos short. Uh, the main uh, idea behind the first video is to introduce you to the idea of um, um, supply chain network design. And a lot of these uh, models that we're going to uh, talk about as part of the supply chain network design, they basically fall into two categories. You have facility location models and capacity allocation models, and sometimes they do both at the same time. So the idea is to maximize overall profitability of the supply chain and to do this you have to have many trade-offs uh, during network design and the um, we uh, we use network design models to decide not just uh, facility location but also capacities we are also going to assign the current demand to facilities and identify transportation lanes we did a lot if you remember we did a lot of this with the transportation and the transshipment model also but what we do with the uh, models that we're going to talk about this week are uh, going to be going to take it one step further so they're going to supersize those models right so important information to keep uh, keep track of are what are your supply sources what are your demand sources uh, where can the potential facility sites be what kind of demand you have in the different markets what kind of costs you have everything from facility labor transportation inventory uh, sales price, any taxes and tariffs you have, and again, of course, any desired response time and other service factors. So, all of these things which uh, are impact the location of the facility and also the kind of capacity you can allocate for them. And so, to um, so the first step in network design is figuring out in general where your supply, uh, where your supply locations and demand locations are, and how you're going to connect them. And uh, to do that, we're going to use some network optimization models. Now, this is an example of something that we'll go through in a later video. But um, in the next video, we're going to talk about the capacitated, it says plant location model. I'm just going to call it capacitated facility location model in general. So that's, that's the plan for the next video. So we're going to talk about capacitated facility location model, which helps us locate facilities that have limited capacities so it's a it's a trade off between how much capacity you can use and how expensive it is and what kind of facility you can open and things like that right so um, i will do that in the next video right. take care